buenos dias mis amigos all right so i'm going to try to make this real short and i, I want to show a huge problem with this idea of a millennial kingdom all right aside from the fact that it's not in the bible anywhere now first of all let me show you something that's interesting if you look at all these people talking about the millennial reign okay which there is no millennial reign in the bible at all and if you watch these guys talk you know whether it's millennial reign uh you know pre-millennialism a millennialism post millennialism i say take all that stuff and throw it in the garbage but what does the bible say <laughs> I mean, really, everybody seems to be philosophizing and not showing you exactly what the Bible says. And of course, if you don't believe what the Bible says, then naturally you're not going to want to point to what the Bible says, right? So, I mean, for example, let's just, I'll use one example here. Um, here. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Hondo eschatological things eschatological oh, or fancy. eschatological fancy personally I don't like the way yeah fancy like words this, dispensationalism eschatology so as some of you know I grew up in a dispensationalist okay so you notice here he talks about seven year tribulation that's not in the bible anywhere nowhere at all alright and he, of course um, thousand year reign not in the bible you, if you scroll through the transcript, you'll notice not one single time does he quote the Bible at all. Not one single quote from the Bible. And this is typical. This is not the only guy doing this. I saw a video earlier, 40 minutes. Not one single time did they quote from the Bible. It's amazing. Talk about things that are in the Bible, but yet you never quote the Bible? That's incredible. Matthew, Mark, Christ, God, Israel. But no actual quote from the Bible. So, let's get into this. What is... Uh, the, maybe one of the biggest, if not the biggest problem with this idea of a millennial kingdom. All right, so if you read Revelation 20, it, it makes no mention of a millennial kingdom, okay? That alone is incredible. All right, so it talks about a thousand years where we live and reign with Christ. Okay, talking about those of us that are born of the Spirit of God, they shall be priests of God and of Christ. Talking about us that are saved, we live and reign with Christ during this thousand years, and obviously that's what we're doing right now. <clears throat> right now, excuse me. Right now we are living and reigning with. Christ right now all right so uh, another way to put this look if we are born in the Spirit of God we have God in us and if God is in us who can be against us right if we have God in us then we reign with Christ right now because Jesus reigns forever he shall reign over the house of jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end all right so in second peter chapter three all right if you're if you're so, trying to sell this idea of a millennial kingdom you got a huge problem right here all right so in second peter three 
notice here the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night excuse me this is clearly when Jesus returns when he comes in the clouds of heaven he comes as a thief in the night you can't have this happening after Jesus is here for a thousand years if Jesus is here on earth then he can't come as a thief in the night this obviously happens at the end of the world when he comes in the clouds of heaven you can't get around it so when you establish that I mean this is it's amazing because it's all throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation but specifically if you look at this and understand that this is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven then you have to you have to I don't know how you you can't see it I don't know how you unless you don't believe what it says Jesus comes as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat in the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up therefore you cannot have a millennial kingdom it's not possible because after this happens everything in this world is gone and then comes the new heavens and the new earth there's no way to get around this it, this is exactly parallel with what we read in Revelation 20 and in Revelation 21 and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more see see it's exactly parallel and I saw a new heaven and a new earth right nevertheless we according to his promise look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness you see the parallel there the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night this is clearly after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven which exactly parallels what we're reading in Revelation 20 when it says they lived and reigned with Christ talking about us okay we are priest of God and of Christ right now it, it's just utterly delusional deranged to suggest that we there are no priests of God right now right because this is not a new idea right we are a royal priesthood right now so again here's the problem for these people that are pushing selling a millennial kingdom second peter chapter 3 the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise All right so everything's gonna be dissolved and there's gonna be a new heaven and a new earth so when this happens we are lifted up when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven we are lifted up in the air our enemy is gathered at our feet and fire comes down from heaven and devours them all and this goes all the way back to Genesis 3 
I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. See, his heel being Christ. We that are born of the Spirit of God are Christ. All right, and this is supported all throughout the Bible, all throughout the Bible. I mean, I feel like I could preach on this all day long. Galatians 3, Now to Abraham and a seed were the promises made. He saith not in the seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And the Lord said to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. Her seed being the woman. And of course, Jesus was born of a virgin. It shall bruise thy head, the serpent's head, because the serpent and his seed, they are all beyond the ground. And those of us that are Christ, we are all up in the air. Okay? So, it shall, thou shalt bruise his, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel, because Christ is up in the air. Those of us that are Christ, and if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed? So we are Christ. We are the people of God. So we will be up in the air with the Lord when he stomps his foot on the head of the serpent. And we're reading that exact same thing here in Revelation 20. Now, this is supported all throughout the scripture. There's nothing standalone. There's not this imaginary thousand year kingdom that is not supported anywhere at all in the Bible. Nowhere, not a single place. Fire comes down from God out of heaven and devoured him. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. All right. So again, um, yeah, I could do this all day. The beloved city. Right, the beloved city is Jerusalem. No question about it. And Jerusalem is above. Okay, Jerusalem, which is above, is free in the mother of us all. So we are lifted up in the air. And fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them. Right. The day of the Lord comes a thief of the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. I mean, this, it's supported all throughout the scripture. Same thing. This idea of a millennial kingdom is not supported, not a single time. And so also, there's no seven-year tribulation. It's not anywhere in the Bible. There's no third temple being destroyed. Jesus destroyed the temple when he laid down his life. All right, that's not in the Bible anywhere. And a huge part of the problem is people not realizing that the Antichrist is already here. I mean, if you think about it, Jesus comes today, are you going to tell him, wait, the Antichrist hasn't come yet. You can't come. You're looking for the Antichrist. You should be looking for Jesus Christ. But he's coming. 